Hi there, next job today is fixing this LG direct drive uh, washer. This one is model F1247TD. Uh, the problem is that it stops, comes up with error code LE and the drive of the motor is uh, somewhat erratic. We might see that in a minute. Uh, really being very uh, jerky. I suspect there's something wrong with the uh, maybe the hall sensor which picks up the speed of the drum in order to control the motor. So it looks like sometimes the motor hasn't got enough power to turn the washing. Normally but twice the load that's in here uh, uh, in there. But uh, it's as if the motor hasn't got enough power. So we're going to take the back off, check all the wiring and uh, measure the motor resistance and see what we can find. So here we can see it's making a noise like it should be turning, but the drum is not turning very well. There it's got a little jerk, didn't turn, then eventually did turn. A rather erratic behaviour. Yeah, it's having real trouble in actually turning the drum. As you can see it didn't even do a full rotation there. One of the other symptoms of its problem. I suspect it's going to come up with the error code in a minute. And so finally it stops and we've got the flashing LE code. So we've taken the top panel off and the back panel to check for any uh, noticeable uh, like wear problems or burnt cabling, corroded connectors, leaking water, but it's none of that. Uh, so what I believe is the problem is the rotor position uh, sensor, which is the bit this plug goes into. I've I've unplugged it for the moment and ditto with this one, this one here, so it's the same wire. And to get to that we have to take the uh, motor stator off, so I'm going to do this bolt with a 17mm socket. And you can either get somebody to hold the tub or, as I did, just wrench it quickly and eventually do that quite a few times. The bolt loosens, take that off. Remove the stator, or the rotating bit, whatever it's called, and uh, then underneath are some bolts that hold the uh, the coil pack in place, which you then remove. That's the rotating part of the motor removed. Then we undo these ones. All right, that's the coils removed, and then just undo the last connection by squeezing in the sides of this connector to try and unclip. These little hooks. Oh, that's the cool part of the most removed. The position sensor is this little block here, which is actually a hall sensor, has sensors over this side. And we need to replace that whole unit, lift that little clip up there. And that should lift up, which it does, unhooks at the back. And uh, just get a new one of those. Uh, they're on sale on the internet for I think £12. So we'll change that and hopefully it'll fix it. So here's the new parts. I've actually gone for the upgraded uh, part number. Uh, instead of the 2001A, I've gone for the 2002A part, which apparently has an upgraded resistor in it. So full part number is uh, 6501KW2002A. Which if you search for that on the internet, as I say, it's about 12 UK pounds, so about 20 pounds including the postage. Uh, this one's from uh, Parkmaster, uh, next day's delivery. Now, despite what people actually say about the 2002A being an upgrade and compatible with the 1A part, uh, it's not actually true, because when fitting you can see that the new 2002 part actually sits further off the surface of the uh, rotor which means then the rotor doesn't fit flush against the drum and you can see the reason for that uh, the new part is on the right it's got those additional little tags or additional little bits of plastic there that make it stand off and actually even the lengths of the sensors are slightly different and the hole position the back tab which is quite difficult to point out here but oh this is a bit one-handed this whole position here slightly different to that whole position there so uh, I would actually recommend going for the 1A part I think 
even the 1As have uh, been upgraded and all of the old parts removed anyhow that were less reliable so uh, thank you for all those people on the internet for recommending the wrong part and hopefully this uh, video is useful to other people so go for the 2001A part uh, what I'll try and do now is um, hack off bits of plastic rather than bother to send it back so you can get it to fit properly and so again here you can see the bottom part is the 2002 top part is the 2001 and uh, you've got vastly different lengths of the tags that stick out so uh, it's about 5 mil higher than the old part hence why that's why the new part doesn't fit correctly on the motor rather it, it fits on the uh, the rotor assembly okay but then the rotor assembly doesn't actually sit flush against the drum and the rotors are sitting about uh, 5 mil away from the drum right so I've modified the 2002A part to uh, fit properly which involved as you can see cutting these tabs down and uh, so they're flush with surrounding plastic cut a little couple of slots either side so the plastic in the middle can bend drill some holes to take the tabs three little holes uh, the other side over here I ground completely flat and I believe it's going to fit tried it once and it does actually now fit sitting more flushly with this edge flush against the plastic also had to cut away uh, the piece of plastic that otherwise blocks these little taps from coming through and it's quite firm like that but what I will do is apply a little bit of polymer sealant under it to glue it more firmly into place just to make sure that it's not going to move. All right, that's the new sensor fitted after I've cut down the plastic and just applied a little bit of uh, glue to finally hold it in place and I think that should stay in place and uh, I'll now reassemble and try it. Apply a little bit of thread locking compound like Loctite uh, 243 onto the threads of the 17mm bolt before you screw the top of the motor back on again. It uh, locks it in place, stops it from undoing. Able to pull then the magnetic part of the motor top part onto the spindle. Now, for the last bit of tightening, you just need to give it a good jolt like a punch with a spanner. Uh, it should be tight enough. I could get somebody to hold the drum as well, but uh, do that a few times. Tighten it up and then we'll test it out. All right, there we go. I uh, just put on a simple uh, spin program, turn on and press the spin button and uh, it's operating fairly smoothly, bit of a noise, might be a bit of plastic rubbing on the drum, a way away over time, or it could be just the noise of the clothes. And there we are, all fully working again. Full wash and no LE error code. Thanks for watching.